Hi everyone, I'm Grant K and welcome back to the seventh part of the video series on how to use Action, Autodesk Smoke's main 3D compositor. In the previous video, we shaded a background with light, we imported in a Photoshop file, as well as instanced a layer to complete the design. Let's pick up from where we left off with some 3D positioning, animation, and much more. In the schematic, as well as the Action 3D composite, we created four instances of a single image object. Now that we have a complete circle, we would like to move it as a single object. The technique to achieve this look is by locking all four instances together using a single axis node. We'll switch back to the node menu on the left-hand side of the interface, and in the node bin, we'll drag an axis node into the schematic above the four axis nodes which create the instances. Holding down the Shift hotkey on the keyboard, drag the axis node and kiss each of the four axis instance nodes. As we can see, this new axis is the parent of the four instances. With the new node still selected, we can also rename the node using the text box to the right of the player controls. For example, we'll call this node Inner Circle. Finally, drag a connection from the axis called Tech Talk to the Inner Circle Axis node. From just looking at the schematic, you should be able to tell the relationship of the objects in the composite. So if we were to move the top Tech Talk axis, it would move the group of nodes. But if we were to move any of the children nodes, this would move the individual components of the group. This is where the flexibility of the schematic really shines. Now let's position the image objects in 3D space. We'll first start off with the outer circle. Double click on the axis node above the outer circle image object and this will bring up its object menu. Select the schematic view and we will change the viewer mode from schematic to top view. To do this, click on the view pop-up at the bottom left of the interface and change the setting from schematic to top view. Use the navigation controls on the right of the interface to zoom the view out a bit if necessary. So once again, we can adjust the Z position of the axis node so that the outer ring goes back in 3D space. However, you can see that in the top view as well as in the result view, the outer ring gets visibly smaller as it moves away from the camera. Now if you are animating a layered design in 3D space, sometimes you may not want the elements to change and actually have them remain the same size in the viewers, even though they are being moved closer or further away from the 3D camera. We'll undo the move by pressing the undo button on the right of the interface or you can press Command Z on the keyboard. In the object menu under the player controls, you will see an option called Auto Scale. This is currently set to off. Click on the blue pop-up and choose On Position Changes. Now, as we move the outer ring back in 3D space, it automatically starts scaling larger. This is clear in the top view, but in the result view, the image object appears to look the same. This is great because we don't have to manually guess the scale value and Smoke works it out for us. Let's do the same for the inner circle object. Select the top view and press the escape hotkey on the keyboard to toggle back to the schematic view. Click the inner circle axis node which selects it and press the escape hotkey again to return to the top view. Once more, in the object menu, change the auto scale option from off 
to on position changes. We'll move the inner circle to half the distance of the outer circle. All of this repositioning will start making sense once we start animating the camera. But one thing I'd like to focus on briefly is if we scrub the time bar, you will notice that the light we used originally for the background is also affecting the logo. Ideally, we would like one light to affect the background and possibly another light to affect just the logo and any other elements in the scene. Using the navigator, we'll pan over to the light node which also shows the background image objects. Using the cursor pop-up which is to the right of the player controls, we can change the cursor mode from move mode to lighting mode. The idea here is to specify what light affects. Using this new cursor mode, you can drag a blue connection from the light to the gradient image object. We'll repeat the same operation for the pattern image object. Now our logo and elements are now in complete darkness because they have been excluded from the light. We'll switch back to the node bin menu and in the middle of the node bin, we can click and drag another light into the schematic and position it underneath the background image objects. Once again, using the pop-up menu located to the right of the player controls, we change the cursor mode from move to lighting. This time, hold down the option hotkey on the keyboard and drag a red connection from the second light to the gradient image object. We'll perform the same operation for the pattern image object. The red connection excludes the background image objects and the pattern image object from the light being emitted from the second light. Using the cursor pop-up located to the right of the player controls once more, we will change the cursor mode from lighting back to move. Now double click on the light node in the schematic which will bring up its object menu. Using the Z position, push the light behind the camera. When scrubbing the time bar now, you can see how the background has its own lighting and so does the logo and its elements. Now let's quickly animate the rings. We'll go to the first frame of the composite. Double click on the outer circle axis node and this will bring up its object menu. To the right of the interface, turn on the auto key button. We are going to rotate the ring on its Z axis. Holding down the control hotkey on the keyboard, click on the Z slider for rotation. This very action resets the slider to its default setting, but it also keyframes the current frame with the default value. So basically we have keyframed the Z rotation with a value of zero at frame one. Going to the last frame of the composite, we can dial in a value of 45 degrees into the Z slider by using the calculator. When scrubbing the time bar, we can see what animation has been created. Now we'd like to copy this animation from the outer circle to the inner circle. Returning back to frame one of the composite, we can see that the Z rotation value for the outer circle is zero. Holding down the command key on the keyboard, click down on the Z rotation channel. You will see that a contextual pop-up with various options appear. We will select the copy channel option. In the schematic view, select the inner circle axis node and this brings up its object menu. Holding down the command hotkey on the keyboard, click down on the Z rotation channel once more and this will bring up the contextual pop-up. This time, we'll choose paste channel. 
So when we scrub the time bar, you can see how we have the same animation on both the inner circle as well as the outer circle. For more detailed videos about animation, please visit the Smoke Learning Channel. In the next video, we're going to be tweaking the animation just a little bit more, and we'll also start animating the 3D camera. If you'd like to know any more information about Autodesk Smoke, or you'd like to download the free 30-day trial copy, just go to autodesk.com forward slash smoke for Mac. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon in the next video.